In this video, we'll look at how to do special triangles when you're working with radians. So the first thing is to draw the special triangles. There are two of them. And this video, by the way, is the same video as special triangles in degrees, except I'm going to work in radians. So start with my special triangle, and this time I've drawn the triangle more or less looking as isosceles, but it doesn't matter as long as you label the sides and angles correctly. The special triangle is the first one, an isosceles triangle, both these sides are 1, and their corresponding angles are still 45, but we write that in radians. What's 45 in radians? Pi over 4. Eventually, you'll get good at thinking in radians, but if you're having trouble, how do I know what 45 is in radians? Pi is the same as 180, converting radians to degrees. What's 45? It's 180 divided by 4, or pi over 4. And what's this side of this triangle? Root 2. So there's my first special triangle, same one as in radians. A 1 with a pi over 4 across from it, a 1 with a pi over 4 across from it, and a root 2 as the hypotenuse. What's the other special triangle? Again, if you've watched the degrees video, you'll know it's 30 and 60 as its two angles, but now we write that in radians. How do you write 60 degrees? Well, you know pi is 180, so how do you make 180 into 60? You divide it by 3. That's why this is pi over 3. That's 60 degrees in radians. And this one is 30 degrees. How do you write that in radians? For the same reason, pi over 6. The sides haven't changed, though. Across from the big angle, pi over 3, is root 3. Across from the smaller angle, 30 degrees, is a 1. And the hypotenuse is 2. Be careful. A lot of people mess up this one because they think of this as 30 degrees because they see a 3. Remember, pi over 3 is 60, and it's across from the big side. Pi over 6 is 30, it's across from the little side. And the hypotenuse in this triangle is 2. The hypotenuse in this triangle is root 2. That gives us what we need to start working with special triangles in radians. In particular, you'll be asked to solve for an exact value. And don't use your calculator. I mean, you can, but you won't get full marks. Because here I'm looking that you can do these special triangles. For example, sine of pi over 3. You just go to your special triangle and you think about Sokotoa. And you think, what's sine? It's opposite over hypotenuse. So go to pi over 3, take the opposite. That's root 3 over hypotenuse, that's 2. And that's all there is to it. Same as in degrees, except you're working with radians now. So let's try cos of pi over 6. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So go to pi over 6 and take the adjacent, root 3, and divide by the hypotenuse, 2. And you'll notice just like before, when you do sine pi over 3, you get the same as cos pi over 6 because you're switching sides and you're switching angles. Let's look at tan of pi over 4. Go to either of the 10 pi over 4s. They're both pi over 4 in this triangle. What's opposite? 1. What's adjacent? 1. Could have picked this one. What's opposite? What's adjacent? You still get 1 over 1. And if you get 1 over 1, please reduce that to a 1. So we've used special triangles and radians for a couple of, or a few simple things, but now we're going to use it for our main thing. To solve for cos theta equals negative root 3 over 2 as an example, this is you solving for, for rotations, and usually it'll say when the theta that you're looking for, the angle of the rotations, is somewhere between 0 and 2 pi. That's 0 to 360. That means there's going to be two possible answers. So let's sketch... Always starts with a sketch. Make sure to put your arrows, label your X and Y, and also label your initial arm. Just shade that in so I can see it. Here's my initial arm. This is going to be the thing that rotates, the initial arm. And cosine is negative, so remember your cast rule. Everything or all are positive in quadrant 1, and cosine is positive in quadrant 4. So that means in quadrant 2, cosine could be negative, and also quadrant 3. Don't worry about these arms being the same length. Just make sure they're in the right quadrants, cosines negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. And make sure to label each rotation. This is one possible rotation, theta 1, that could make this answer. And this is the other possible rotation, theta 2. 
Also label your angles inside the triangle, the related acute angle, which I typically call beta. So my related acute angle beta is the next thing I'm going to solve for. There are three steps, sketch, related acute angle, and solve, or raw, sometimes I just call it raw. And I'm going to solve for this related acute angle by going cosine of beta. I want to solve inside these triangles now. Since I'm just temporarily working inside a triangle, I no longer have negatives. So when you go to do the related acute angle, one, make sure you're talking about beta, the angles inside the triangles, and two, make sure to use the positive version of what you're solving for. How do you solve cos beta equals a fraction? You inverse cos. But unlike other questions you've done, you'll work with special triangles when you want to get an exact value or when the question says determine exact value. How do you determine an exact value? Instead of going to your calculator, you go to a special triangle, in this case the one with root 3 over 2, and look which angle produces a root 3 over 2. Well, if I picked pi over 3 and I'm doing cosine, pi over 3 would give a cosine of 1 over 2, so that's the wrong angle. It has to be this one. How do I know? Because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and this angle, pi over 6, gives adjacent over hypotenuse of root 3 over 2. So the related acute angle is pi over 6. Same as in the special triangles in radians, uh, same as in special triangles in degrees videos, but now we're in radian. So now solve for theta 1. I'm going to separate my work here with a nice line showing this is separate. I solved inside the triangle. Now I'm going to solve the rotation theta 1. From here, halfway around a circle is a rotation of 180 degrees, or you know it now in radians as pi. So we're going to go pi and then come back whatever this beta was, pi over 6, to get this theta 1. Again, it's this much, which is 180 or pi, take away the beta. So I'm going to write pi minus pi over 6. And now check your numeracy skills. That means theta 1 is, let's make a common denominator, this would be 6 pi out of 6 minus pi out of 6. So theta 1 equals 5 pi over 6. That's our first rotation. And you could try this on a calculator. If you are in radians and punch in what's cos of 5 pi over 6, you'll get the same thing as negative root 3 over 2. But we have another answer, that theta 2. Theta 2 is in quadrant 3. Quadrant 3 is a rotation of pi plus whatever beta is. It's always the same formula. In quadrant 3, it's pi plus whatever your related acute angle is. Once again, we get a common denominator, which is out of 6. And you know what it's going to be, because we just did it. Same common denominator. Make pi out of 6. It's 6 pi out of 6, which still give you pi. And so when you add up 6 pi over 6 plus pi over 6, you get 7 pi over 6 don't have to box it, I just like it. Helps see the answer. And so what have we done? We've solved using special triangles by doing sketch the rotation, find the related acute angle, and solve both possible rotations. And that's special triangles and radians. We drew both of them, we did some simple questions, and then we solved rotations.